All right, man, I'm going through your your um, review here. About to hit send, got everything written up, where we all are. Um, but I wanted to talk through quite a bit of stuff with you. So I'm looking at the screen here, uh, and I've got all the notes that you've sent me, all of my personal notes, um, and then I've got your program here too. Um, you're a weightlifter over and over, who's, who's transitioning over into other strength sports and strongman um, that stands out sticks out. Uh, I mean, your quads hang over your knees when you stand up. Um, your body moves like a weightlifter. So it's not a bad thing. It means we have to capitalize on that uh, and we have to work. I wouldn't say you have weaknesses, uh, but I'm trying to get your body to work in, in a slightly different manner than, than what you're normally used to. Uh, watching you bench press, number one sign you're a weightlifter. Uh, big thing I want you to look at is your wrist. They're cocked back when you're bench pressing like that. Got to straighten the wrist. Um, don't be afraid to wear a wrist wrap. Keeps those wrists locked. Uh, there are several other things, but I think, I mean, you have no lats into the lift. Um, you have the rest of your body is not into the lift at all. Uh, no speed, but I think the first thing is, is getting those wrists straight. Once we get the wrist straight, I think the bar's gonna line up with your elbows and it's gonna sit and set on your lats much better and, and all, several things you're going to click into place from that. Um, so we're just going to stick with, with the bench press program and, and I've got you pressing in a bunch of different ways and I wanted to cover this. The program that I have you on is going to be different every week uh, and we're trying to assess strengths and weaknesses and generally when I throw something like this at someone, they're greatly out of shape. You're a weightlifter whose gym has been closed for four or five months. Um, so your body deconditions really, really fast. You know, a weightlifter is, is going to, uh, progress from very frequent trainings. Um, and, and obviously you can see that from your squat, your squat got better as the, as week one went along, your squat got better. Your whole body got better as week one went along because you're used to training, um, what, seven to 11 times per week. Uh, so which, you know, when you told me that you could train five to six days a week, um, automatically I hear that from everybody. And I say, yeah, you know, you're lying. You don't understand. And, and then watching you go through week one, yeah, you definitely can train uh, six days a week. Uh, you definitely can stand and, and, and take six training sessions in a week. Um you mentioned, you know, I'm going to hear your squats and good mornings are both absolutely great. Uh, as you get stronger, you're going to push more. You're concerned with the percents that I'm asking you to do. Percents are very rough. Um, I'm never concerned about the percent of the weight on the bar. I shouldn't say never, rarely. I'm more concerned about the sets and reps that you get. So if you're, you know, tired, exhausted, bad days, you're, you know, worn down, um, you know, take 5, 10, 20% off. Uh, whatever weight I've asked you to do, but get the sets and reps. If you're absolutely strong and you've had several days in the week that I've just viewed where you were much stronger or you got stronger as the week went. Uh, so saying 70 or 80% wasn't accurate by the end of the week. Um, and, and they were joke weights for you. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about, you know, going heavy. Uh, you made smart decisions there, but you mentioned you feel kind of off balance. Um, I could see that with some of your squats, you were definitely losing your balance. Uh, stepping back, stepping forward, something was definitely wrong. And then doing the behind the neck presses, your left side is below your right side. And you mentioned that your right scapula uh, wasn't staying in place. Now, is it not staying in place and then you're pushing with the shoulder muscle? Um, because that shoulder is rotating, you know, to, to accommodate for something. I would prefer rather not to, you know, get stuck up on this. Um, we're just going to continue to throw those in there. You could do those every day if you wanted to with the bar, uh, 40, 50 kilos, whatever, um, just as a daily movement, as GPP almost. Um, but I think your body is going to correct as you go along. Uh, let me see. Uh, log, we got to work on your clean. Um, 
I'll send you some photos and some videos, but on the clean, uh, you are trying to basically hang clean the log. Uh, and the strongman, the log is totally different than a barbell. So you, you've got to stand up with it and let the bar hang down like it's in a hang. Uh, and then tuck it in to the crease of your hip and then sit down into a full squat. And then you're going to pull that log into your body and then shoot your head back and it's going to roll up. You cannot do a, a heavy log without setting down into a full clean. Um, yeah, you can't. Uh, if, if you want to see some, some great log work, technical genius work, uh, Graham Hicks, you can see a lot of his videos that he's posting on Instagram and Twitter. Um, he's a technician, and remember, he was a 105 kilo strong man before he was a, I think, soon to be world record holder uh, in the log press um, open class. Uh, leg drive, got to work on the timing with the push press. I, I wrote to work on the timing in here before I watched you with the small log at the end of the week. The small log in the last video I saw, I don't know if it's the end of the week or the beginning of the week. Your timing and leg drive is much better, but you're using a teeny tiny log about that big around. So when you use the small log and you've got the shoulder flexibility to do it, you had great leg drive and you had great timing. With the bigger log, you are, you're up and it's, you know, it's much more, it's out in front of you. Uh, it's up, you've got to lean back. Actually, no, the, the, key, the, the key that I want you to think about is to have open hands, relaxed hands, just like a barbell. If you've got that bar across your chest, you've got your hands on the bar, open your hands, relax the bar, chest up, present the body, use the legs to drive it up. But once the bar is overhead, then you press with your hands to lock it out. Same concept with the log. Keep the chest up. Relax your hands. Don't squeeze and keep it in a place. I know it does. The log doesn't feel like it's in a great place, um, but you have to relax and get into that position to where the log will stay there. Okay. Have patience. Get it there. Um, it'll happen. I think all of this is going to come together on its own. Uh, that's my opinion. I've included some funny photos here. Um, on your programming, I moved your event day to the to the end. Um, I've put a couple of press days in there. Uh, I don't care what order you do these. I don't care if you get to one of these days and say, hey, I just can't do this. Uh, and you throw one out. This the way I've got everything designed is you can throw out two days of this uh, and, and be fine. Uh, I've got you doing some either log press axle or barbell against some bands. Now, the reason I want you to do this working on your push press uh, or strict press is I want you to feel, you need more shoulder work, you need more tricep work, and I need you to feel more grounded as you're pressing either one of those. Um, the bands will help that. <clears throat> if you don't have the bands, that's fine. I've got a an option here that you can do um, without the bands. And, and you'll be fine. Some incline log. Again, the incline log with or without bands, you'll be fine. We need to gain some muscle and add some muscle here. You need to be more comfortable with the log in your hands. Put in some dips. Uh, and then I crossed all that out. I think it's too much uh, right now. And I put in some therapy work here. A couple of exercises. I've got some photos. I just have a hunch. When you mention the upper back, scapula, shoulder, pressing, squats, whatever, I've just got a hunch here. Try these exercises. I have a feeling that th these are going to be really, really hard and throw everything off. Um, and if it does, we can keep doing them. And you will progress. Uh, some balance band presses. Try those. That's therapy work. It's a lot of tricep work. The more that you can do um, on, on all of this secondary pressing work like the band press and, and things like that it's not going to beat you up joint wise and it's not going to completely exhaust your body um, but I think what we can see is long term you're going to see all of your pressing go up maybe not immediately but in a month and six weeks you're going to see everything start to really really uh, rise and you're going to put on some muscle as well day two I put this in here this can be a recovery day Nothing in here is heavy. Um, it's basically a full body. You got some close grip bench press, some front squats, some good mornings, some pull-ups. Um, there's nothing here that can't be completely scrapped and, and left out. You don't need anything except a bar. 
uh, maybe a 10, a 20, or a 25 per side. Should not be hard. This is just about getting everything moving. Uh, and depending on how sore you are from the days before, you want to snatch on this day, snatch. You want to clean and jerk, clean and jerk. Um, I know that your body can recover from those just fine as well. Um, lots and lots of freedom on this. The day three that I've got here, the squats, uh, I've still got you. It's not heavy. It's not hard work. Um, two sets of five at 65%, three sets of five at 75 once again, if, if you feel strong, if you do your first set of five at 75% and you're like, hey, this is, this is a joke. I mean, this is just a joke. This is not 75%. It's more like 60%. Add weight. That's fine. Uh, I know that you're used to doing that. I mean, you're used to saying, okay, we're doing fives today. You know, it's 77% uh, this morning because we're going to, you know, we're going to front squat heavy tonight. Um, and it feels easy so you put another 10 on each side that's perfectly fine i'm not worried about that uh the tempo based squats and deadlifts we're, we're looking for weaknesses here if we continue to add weight and we continue to push you sets and reps we're going to break down your joints um so i've got you doing stuff like the six second squat three seconds down three seconds up um 80 percent i'm just looking for you to be patient and to be able to drive and, and dig. Uh, and I think this is the kind of work that's gonna make a difference on things like your yoke. Um, going in through here. I've got the 10 second deadlifts again. I know they kind of ate your lunch last week. Uh, so we even added weight this week. Five seconds up, five seconds down. When I'm watching you deadlift, I really wanna see a video of you from the front. Uh, seeing you from the side, I can see that as you added weight to the bar, Nothing broke down, but you're doing it like a clean or like a snatch. And that's not necessarily bad if that's where your strength is. I, I mean, your quads look crazy. Uh, and your hamstrings aren't small, uh, but your body is, is pushed forward a little bit. And slowly we're going to pull it back. If, if I, We're going to make small changes. Small, small changes. You're doing wonderful. I don't want it to sound like you're, you're not doing wonderful. Uh, but with the tempo up and tempo down, if, if, I, if I ask you to go out and deadlift hard and explosive, and I know you're worried about your deadlift, there's a good chance you end up with something really, really sore. So I think you've got some weaknesses in your mid and upper back muscles. That's what I think. So the tempo deadlift is a great way for us to work those uh, all that back muscle from your traps all the way down. Work the muscles without... A risk of injury without well, a high risk of injury and, and then give me a couple of weeks and we're going to do some serious pulling uh rounded back deadlifts watch the video um this is probably something that's completely foreign to you uh but i think it will transfer over into the strongman lifts and i, th I actually think this will be a strong lift for you another day of bench press um close or wide stance squats i don't care which one you do but if you're doing close i mean close like unlike impossible to hit depth I don't even care if you hit, I don't even care if you come close to depth. Um, it's just, it's getting a little bit more leg out of it. Um, think about how much you dip down for a long press. Not that much. I want you to squat deeper than that. Um, think about how your body's exploding up to throw the sandbags. We're looking for something similar to that. If you want to go really, really wide, that's fine too. And then I threw in the crucifix training. Um, that's just some extra shoulder movement. I want this really, really light, intensity level, very, very low. All I want to do here is just work a little bit more of the shoulder muscles because I think you need as much shoulder muscles work as possible. If and the crucifix is out to the side, um, if that is painful at all, bring it straight around to the front, straight in line to the front, uh, and don't hesitate at all to do that. Uh, that may even be better for you. And I don't care if it's thumbs up. I don't care if it's palms down. Do whatever you feel like. Of course, abs, whatever, whenever you can. Events, um, you're with the crew. Do what they do. Don't be in the way till you've earned your way into the crew. Um, log, I've got five sets of one in the 80, 90% range. If 90 feels good, goes up, go up. I, I'm not worried about you making a miss because whatever you miss with today in two weeks is going to be a joke. Okay, so we're, we can't base all this off of 
you know, Prilipin's principle or principles um, in each chart because you're going to be making strength increases rapidly. Yoke. Um, if it fits in with the crew, I want you to do half runs instead of whole runs. So instead of going all the way down, like what you did this last week, a half run, count to 30, I don't care. Reset, pick it up and go. What I, what I think you need to do on the yoke, I think you're picking up the yoke like a weightlifting squat. I know you're grabbing out wide and you're not grabbing, you know, up high like a weightlifting squat, but I think that your upper back is loose. So what I want you to do when you grab those side handles and you're grabbing here, I want you to grab those things and just pull everything in like you're doing, a, like you've got a cable or a band from each side and you're pulling it in close to you. And it's gonna tighten up everything in your middle back. You mentioned the middle back being absolutely fried. I think it looks like you're setting, setting up like a weightlifting squat and it's owning you and it's, it's, it's making your body bend this way as you walk. So as that weight is up high on your neck, which it should be with the yoke, as it gets heavy, it's gonna cause you to round forward a little bit and it's gonna put a lot of stress on the upper back. If you can grab the sides and squeeze and pull it into you, that's your lower lats tightening. That's everything of your entire back getting locked in and it locks your entire body in and it's gonna allow you to put speed into going forward. Quick tip, if you cannot sprint without the yoke, you're not gonna be able to sprint with the yoke. So your warm ups should be just some, I don't mean all out sprints. Um, I don't necessarily mean a jog, but I think you need to make sure that you are capable, your hamstrings are capable of you sprinting, um, you know, five meters. Um, that is key. If you can't do it without it, you're not gonna be able to move fast with it. And you're definitely strong enough, you're just not fast enough. The farmers, those are hard farmers. Those are top loaded cylinders. I don't know how you get more difficult than top loaded. So they can be top loaded or they can be cylinders, but to be top loaded cylinders is just insanity. Uh, those are hard farmers to use. So if you can use those, you can use any farmers out there. Uh, play, limit your intensity. Don't work to failure here. If your grip starts to go, you're done. Um, you're, you're overtrained for the week if your grip starts to go. Um, yeah, I don't care what you do. That's gonna be similar muscles to the yoke, but as they start leaning forward, it's gonna bend you forward even more. Even more. It's gonna be a really, really bad thing. Uh, it's gonna kill those muscles even more than your yoke. And then my last piece here, I put down an extra session of the log, um, some 70% work for some clean and presses, uh, working up. I just ask you to be cautious if you are going to be working with uh, that really, really small log, the really small log is bicep heavy. Uh, the closer that little log is to you and you're having to twist the wrist and curl it up, uh, the more likely you are to develop some bicep tendonitis. So use some caution. You can take that log out of the rack instead of from the floor. That'll be perfectly fine. You don't have to clean that one. Um, anyway, I'm really excited. Make sure you're recovering. Make sure you're eating, staying on top of this. And at the first sign that anything's going wrong and you're not recovering, email me urgent. We'll make some changes. Take a couple of days off. Anyway, this is going to be about three or four minutes and it's almost 19 minutes. I'm going to post this to YouTube. I'm going to send you your training. Cannot wait to see what you do this week. Have a good one, man.